well. Um, I hope you had as good an Easter uh, as possible. Um, here's something that I've been doing this last week. I said that I've managed to um, pick up my sculpting tools again. Uh, and although that's true, I've only really managed to put finishing touches to a few pieces that I'd started beforehand. So here are some of the um, characters that I've been working on for uh, the Dreamstone um, miniatures range. That was supposed to be on Kickstarter uh, this month. Obviously with the, with the current situation that's been pushed back, I hope to do it between um, now and September, which is the, uh, the 30th anniversary uh, of the TV show. So uh, I've been finishing those guys off. Um, the other thing that I have done is paint up my uh, treeman that I said I was going to paint up. There we go. There he is. Um, this is the, uh, the Hinchcliffe model um, that's based on this Brian Froud uh, illustration from um, the fairies book uh, there and managed, uh, there you go. managed to get this signed by Brian Pratt so that's uh, that was exciting so there's uh, there's my um, Hinchcliffe dream over here and that was the um, that was the miniature for uh, the painting challenge the lockdown challenge for this week which was to paint something uh, with a woodsy feel, something that felt like it it could belong in the uh, the kind of Celtic British Dark Age folklore setting uh, of the woods. So thank you to the people who sent me um, photos of of that challenge. If you have done that challenge, um, do send us some photos um, by email by um, uh, posting in one of our Facebook groups. Um, I have now set up a Facebook group for. The lockdown challenges so if you've done uh, any of the previous challenges we had one on um, the model that sat in your painting queue for the longest we had one on uh, the ugliest model that you own um, and now this one on uh, a woodsy model um, please go on to facebook find those uh, lockdown challenges i'll put a post um, i'll put a link in the uh, comment section uh, to that page we'd love to see what you've been um, working on, which leads me to this week's challenge. We'll get that out of the way uh, nice and early. And this week's challenge is to um, take something broken and repurpose it for your hobby. So that's quite open-ended. That could be um, taking a miniature that's broken and fixing it with some green stuff or some bits from your bits box. Um, it could be finding a broken toy or um, and then something that you're throwing out from the garden and turning that into a piece of scenery. Um, can be as open and as broad as you want to interpret it, but something broken, repurposed for your hobby, um, is the uh, uh, the challenge for this week. Um, now, while I was sculpting the um, Dreamstone figures, finishing off the Dreamstone figures, I thought I'd put together a quick time lapse of um, how I go about um, doing uh, a basic armature and blocking out a figure. Um, when sculpting, so I'll run the, the time lapse of that and try and give a bit of um, commentary uh, over the top of it. Um, and then I'll show you some uh, pictures of the finished anatomical models at the end. They're a bit rushed because I was just doing it as a demonstration, but they'll, um, they'll hopefully show you the process that I go through. Um, and then at the end of that, well, there's a, a bit more news to share with you um, and some more um, feedback from you to invite. So uh, stay tuned and um, enjoy the time lapse. Okay, so I'm using a uh, 28 millimeter Wargames Foundry miniature as a, a scale guide here. You see, the size of miniature varies quite a lot from one company to another. So if I'm doing a commission sculpt, it's quite important that they um, that they fit uh, with the scale of the miniatures that already exist. Um, my own stuff for the woods um, is is scaled to fit with 28 mil so that it can go with um, historical Saxons, Celts, Vikings, um, a lot of those are still in true 28mm. Um, uh, I'm sculpting in uh, this copper wire. This is 0.6mm um, copper wire. I have typically been sculpting in 0.8mm. This is a bit thinner than I would normally use, um, but I thought I'd try for extra flexibility. And what I'm doing here is rolling it with a steel ruler um, 
to flatten it out so they can get a nice neat join when soldering. I don't normally use a manual soldering iron, I normally use a, a gas soldering iron um, and use the flame jet because it means that I don't have to actually touch um, the wire here where you've actually got physical contact between the, the iron and the wire. It's a bit tricky to, um, to maintain the position. Um, but sadly my, my gas uh, soldering iron isn't here so I have to use a manual one. Um, and then just using this um, guide that I've drawn on the, the MDF base here to um, bend at the shoulders and the hips. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop that into a cork there. Check the size. Okay, um, and get a thinner wire. There you go, it's 0.4 millimeter wire. Um, and with that, I'm going to wrap the wire around where the rib cage would go. Uh, and I'm going to use the top of that wire bent over. Sorry, you can't see this mostly happening off screen. Um, I'm going to use the top of that bent over to position the head. There, that's what's happening there. Um, and that just helps secure that midsection of the body. Um, and means that you don't have to worry about sticking an extra wire in. I'm working in green stuff here. This is a two-part um, modeling uh, epoxy putty designed for plumbers originally, and you can buy it called Nidatite. Um, and normally I'd take a small amount of each and I put them in the top two compartments of my little traveling um, putty chest along with some Nuput. That goes in there. there. Um, and some Procreate. Um, in the bottom and mix these putties in various ratios. They're all epoxy putties so you can mix them all um, together with each other to get different consistencies uh, of putty and they all have different strengths. Um, in the bottom I put a bit of um, KY jelly. I used to use that to smooth the miniatures out particularly when I'm using Procreate um, but with green stuff just a bit of uh, a bit of nose grease is now what I tend to use to smooth that out. Um, I, when I'm buying green stuff, I normally buy this stuff from Green Stuff World. Um, it's got a gap in between, so there's no contamination between the blue and the yellow. Um, at the moment, I'm using this strip, which I bought as uh, emergency spare putty, so I'm using that up first because where the two strips join, you can find that the, the putty starts to set after a couple of months. Um, when you buy things like this is the Procreate putty, they come in completely separate. Um, and you can buy green stuff completely separate as well so it doesn't contaminate and it'll last a lot longer. Mixing the two together to get this uh, nice even green colour. Um, ideally mix slightly more of the yellow than the blue. Um, cutting it straight across the ribbon as it comes is, is fine. And that's a, a silicon um, clay shaper with a chisel tip which is what I normally use. Um, certainly for, for bulking out initial shapes. I'm just starting by popping a blob of uh, putty on the feet there to help secure that into the cork. And then I'm adding a, a, a pelvis um, and a rib cage in. Uh, those are the sort of solid bony areas that um, the rest of the, the musculature will hang off. So it's very important to get those in place first. Um, even before posing the model, really, you need to have those solid areas in place because it'll uh, it'll affect how the um, the armature moves once it's all secured. So then, just checking the proportions of everything there, um, and I tend to put a bit of um, putty on the thighs uh, at this point as well, just to thicken them up slightly. Um, it helps to define where the knees are going to go when I come to pose the figure um, a bit later on. Okay, this is uh, the other way that I have made uh, armatures. Without soldering, it's it's much quicker, much easier. You just twist the wire into a loop. Um, as you can see there. And then that twisted bit forms the, the torso um, of the figure. And again, I'm wrapping it with the thinner wire to try and keep it in position um, and to give a head. But the problem with this method is that um, you can find that the um, the shoulders and the hips go off center because where they're wrapped, they're not um, coming off the, the torso completely the same 
uh, same level. So that's important to correct. Um, and you also need to make sure that you've got the um, rib cage and the pelvis in place and dry before you um, start doing any posing with this and even putting it in the cork really. Um, because otherwise that will just, uh, it'll twist in the center and you won't get an accurate um, positioning. So that's drying now and I'm going ahead with putting the feet in place. And at the moment these are just round blobs that I'm pressing down, I'll cut them to shape um, later on, but at the moment I want as much um, reinforcing as I can between the cork um, and the uh, and the wire. Normally I have a little sheet of um, plastic that goes in between the feet and the um, uh, and the cork itself for ease of removal afterwards. Um, that's normally just a bit of plastic card, but you can use um, a piece of sellotape otherwise uh, if you don't have that handy. Otherwise they're just standard corks out of um, these out of champagne bottles. So a good excuse to go out and buy some champagne. And here you can see I'm building from the ground up, putting the um, the calves in and then putting the thighs in. Uh, and this is going to be a, a male model. And I'll talk a bit later about the difference between the male and the female uh, anatomy at this point. Just putting the, the gluteus in there. That's quite important if you don't have um, the gluteus maximus, the arse in your model, um, it'll look very, very flat. Uh, it won't look uh, correct. So you need to make sure that you've got um, you've got that dimension coming out the back of it there. And then I'm putting the uh, intercostal muscles in the side of the rib cage, the um, bones and the um, muscles in the upper arm go on before putting the, um, the the pectoral muscles and the shoulder blades in place because they uh, they will interact with the muscles of the upper arm and it's important to have those in place. Now if I was doing um, a bare chested or a, um, a figure with tight clothing where the musculature would show up, um, I, I would start off by putting just an initial thin layer like I did on the thighs and then I would build the muscles separately um, because this one is going to have um, clothing over the top of it, it's, it's better to um, try and get those muscles roughly in place all in one go, but you don't need to detail them too much. In fact, if you do detail them um, too much, you'll find you get a very, very bulky, top heavy um, figure. So I try, prefer to um, leave them quite thin and under exaggerated, um, unless I'm doing a, a barbarian hero or something where they need to be um, quite large. So just pop the, popping the neck in there over the top of the um, pectorals, then cutting that loop that's formed the arms and twisting them um, to find where the upper and the lower arm sit and try and get the pose um, in place at this point. It's quite important to leave that extra bit of wire overhanging, don't cut it off until um, you've got the hands in place or you've decided what you're doing um, with the hands because if they're holding something in one of the hands having that extra bit of wire as um, maybe the saw blade or the axe handle or whatever else they're, they're holding is uh, going to give the strongest possible bond between um, the body and even if you need to replace it you need to put a thicker staff in there or something um, because it's copper wire you can press it thinly and wrap it around and you get a nice good, uh, nice clean join there. So I'm going to leave the um, excess hanging on the right hand uh, this model, but the left hand I've just dropped to the size um, of the fist there and I'm just popping in um, the uh, back of the hand where the fingers will attach to. Okay, and there's finished uh, male musculature block. Now with the female, um, this is the one, oh, sorry that's just trimming the, the feet to size. Now with the female model, this is the one that uh, was the solid frame so I've already got the feet in place there. Um, crucial difference at this point is that the point where the thighs join the hip, um, with the male they join quite low down if you have a look 
um, at where male legs join the hip, there's a bit of a gap below um, below the hip. So you get a kind of step, uh, whereas with the female, um, the muscles kind of blend smoothly into the top of the hip. So you just need to carry that thigh um, up into the waist a bit higher on the female um, model there. I'm putting the abdominals in. Um, I'm not putting um, separate in, um, uh, muscles on the side of the rib cage here so that she ends up with a narrower um, waist than, than the male has. Um, the other significant difference with the, the female model is that perhaps contrary to what you might expect at this point, um, I'm not going to put much in the way of uh, pectoral muscles in. I'll, I'll put the, the basic shape of the pectorals that underlie the breast tissue in place, but I'm not going to sculpt um, breasts in at this point because they're very um, dependent on what goes on top, whether she's wearing armor, whether she's wearing loose clothing, what um, position she ends up standing in. Um, that will all affect the, the hang of the breast tissue over the top. So um, that's not normally uh, sculpted as part of this initial blocking in of the musculature. Just chopping the um, excess putty off the arms there. Typically thinner um, upper and lower arms uh, for a female model, but as I say, I'm not um, over developing the muscles on the male figure in this case either. And then again, giving the um, excess wire on the right hand so that she can hold something and chopping the left to the size of the actual hand. A little bit more blending in the hips. the hand gripping the whatever that's going to be between the feet to square and then popping the kneecaps in it's usually the last thing to go on the kneecaps for whatever reason probably because they need to go in after the legs have been finally adjusted to their to their last position. And here are my two finished uh, figures, hopefully a bit more in focus so you can see them there. Now these are not for anything in particular, they were um, sculpted just uh, for demonstration purposes, so if you have any suggestions as to what I should do with these, what I should turn them into, um, put a note in the comments. It'd be interesting to hear your suggestions and uh, I'll see what I can see what I can do with them um, in the coming weeks. Uh, maybe show you some more videos of, uh, of the process of sculpting your suggestions. Um, let's come back over here. Now the last thing that I um, that I wanted to mention this week is that on uh, Saturday in a couple of days time would have been uh, salute at the Excel Centre that's now the uh, the Nightingale Hospital um, in London so obviously that's not running um, but uh, shows are for me they're a good opportunity to meet people face to face to answer any questions that people might have to just generally chat about um, the gaming industry and um, the hobby in general um, what people find interesting, what people are liking at the moment, what people are not liking at the moment, um, and to answer any questions that you might have about um, our games, our miniatures, the process of designing and creating um, any of that, uh, any of the things that we do. In fact, anything really. Broad it out, make it 
bigger than the hobby, anything you like, anything you want to discuss. It's just nice to meet and chat with uh, with people. Um, so what I'm hoping to do is to do a, a live stream on this channel from um, 2 till 4 Saturday afternoon. Um, so do join us, do uh, come along, jump in, um, throw us some comments, throw us some questions so I've got something to be talking about um, for that for that period of time. Um, but if there's something that you'd like me to uh, cover, please do um, send me a, a comment or an email or contact me on Facebook and let me know in advance um, so that I can uh, prep something and I've got something to lead off with um, before uh, people join us and join the live stream and, and start throwing questions at me and I'll try and answer um, as many of them as I can. So please do join us then. Um, send me questions, send me comments, send me feedback, send me suggestions for um, what I can do with my little um, sculpted mannequins there um, and send me photos of your finished um, uh, your finished challenge miniatures challenge pieces uh, on the Facebook page and stay safe and stay inside and I will see you next time.